substations that are about a mile or two distant from where we're standing right now. Uh, United Illuminating and we work together very closely to get those wires laid in, essentially under the city of Newport. So the power is being exported out to the grid and serving the, the distribution grid for the, for the city of Newport at large. So um, let's see what else I would say. So uh, this facility was built in the course of about a year, uh, from the time the contract was signed until it was uh, in service and operable. Uh, it is owned by Dominion Resources out of Virginia. Um, Dominion owns this plant. Um, it is their property, so we're limited in terms of the ability that we can to walk onto the property, but you're welcome to go up to where the yellow line is and uh, ask any questions you like. I would say it's always fun to kind of touch the outside of that fuel cell module. That box is making 1.4 megawatts of power. It's got about 90 degrees skin temperature, 1,000 degrees eight inches inside. So um, it's, a, it's a high temperature, truly clean, very high efficiency uh, fuel cell power generation extremely proud of it and, and very happy to bring it in. A few about two players for Center Road, right? I've met before, Center Road Club. Right. Are there opportunities to do even more here to expand? I'm Absolutely. Uh, on this particular site, we're a little constrained on this side and that side, oh, but we, we could do more. Actually, we drove up there, first pointed out that the site to your, that south. Yes. Is Hubble site. Yeah, Hubble site. But I mean, <clears throat> there's always the... Absolutely could. It's a vacant site. And, yeah, the pacing item, if you want to call it, that would be the power purchase agreement that we have with, in this case, Eversource Energy. United Illuminating is our uh, interconnecting utility. Eversource has a PPA for reasons that are kind of labyrinthine you know, or whatever. But um, if we had a PPA to sell the power to yeah. either UI or to Eversource, we'd be off to the races, and we could certainly make that happen. So how often are you running? Are you running this? This is base load. This is base load. Power, 24, so 24 by 7, 7 all the time. On. Yeah. The manufacturing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, our headquarters, of course, is in Danbury. We have 600 people working for us in Connecticut now and, and gradually growing. Announced last year an expansion of our brick and mortar in Newport. So we'll be doubling the, the footprint of that facility and adding jobs to it. But this, you know, the, the fuel cell energy is a perfect example of why you need a national energy strategy. A lot of their sales are into Korea today because they have incentives uh, to deploy fuel cell energy, but they want the technology and they want the jobs, right? Absolutely. They're not terribly interested in importing Connecticut-made fuel cells. And so the more that we're able to buy these and install them here exactly. in Connecticut, the more incentive there is to keep these hundreds of good paying jobs in Connecticut as well. And so, you know, this is, when I talk about um, a national renewable energy strategy from an economic standpoint, I use fuel cell energy as the prime example because the Koreans have figured this out. It's good, clean, reliable power and jobs. Yeah. Uh, and they're trying to, you know, frankly, do an end around on us to yeah. move all of these jobs in this new fuel cell economy uh, to Korea. But this is the best example that we have of America's commitment to fuel cells right here in Bridgeport. Great, great. great place to start would be to correct that typo on the ITC extension that uh, yeah. solar and wind were recently extended, but fuel cells were not. So yeah. we're working hard to get we're that. We're working very hard. I call it a typo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think not exactly that generous, but uh, we're working That's on it. That's because I have well. nothing to do with it. That's why I can call it that. Uh, but yes, thank you, Senator, very much. Back on the bus? Absolutely. No, no, well, Gary's going to talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Gary. Yeah. We will be able to get you both with your hand on it. Eight inches away is the power of the And we're having this a normal the, conversation. This box will power 1,400 volts. This is called the Gina McCarthy post because when she was here for a visit, she did the same thing, but she thought she was going to get burned. So now every dignitary gets the Gina McCarthy. Gina McCarthy yeah, so I right. worked in a, an aluminum, I worked, I worked with an aluminum manufacturing company in Alabama. Yeah. And they would, aluminum, yeah. you know, when it's hot, you maybe you don't, maybe you don't know. It doesn't turn red. Yeah. Because so they had oh, the right. live school that came off the hot mill, maybe a thousand degrees. Yeah. You'd walk, you wouldn't touch it. So I'm always very tough <laughs> touching anything. That's why I touched it first. Yeah. <laughs>
29 units, and then the back piece will be a charter school for 725 students in grades 6 through 12. Uh, grade 8. They run uh, four of the school units in the uh, Central area as well. Um, the, the school provides 105 permanent jobs, 45 coming from the community here in Jerry's Park. Um, we will have a uh, apprenticeship program, so 10% of our workforce will be coming from the community. We will do five-year job training, and they'll be working on our site. The second phase will start about 12 months after, which will be 154 residential units. This building here will come down, and there will be a surface parking lot. I've just secured the O&G site, which is three and a half acres. That will be partially for parking and a 40,000 square foot. Market. Um, working on negotiating another site, which is a private owned site, and then the rest is the city and public. And, the public. and our intention is to go from 50 to 120 percent AMI with supermarket and other supporters there, as well as entertainment and training facilities. There's an old boiler room where you see the stack coming out of. That's going to be the second level is going to have community space, which will be opened up to the community for meetings and training programs and so forth. But the whole job should take about seven years, and we'll be employing over about 250 construction workers over a seven-year period, in addition to job training as well as permanent jobs. The supermarket 75 permanent jobs, so we're bringing a total of about 280 permanent jobs, also in addition to any jobs created by the smaller people. I'm trying to look here. How far are we from the train station? Train station is about a half a mile in each direction. Half, okay, so a half a mile. And how will most people get there? That's well, most people were hoping to work within the Pico Park. This would be a uh, job for them. They'll be drawing from the technical teachers. Okay. 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 Yeah, directly on. That was early on we discussed that. So it'll stop you on Cherry and on railroad going in western mm -hmm. and eastern Europe. Well, and as we continue with the project, we'll hopefully we can implement maybe a trolley on wheels to bring people back and forth in the shuttle system as we start getting more dense. And I'm not sure, is this for sale? No, no, we're all rent. All rent. All rent. Um, at least this block. At least this block will start, we hope, as we go further, you know. But they uh, they rent, uh, studios rent from 776 and uh, at the 50% AMI and the most expensive part is a three bedroom and three bedroom. And there would be two bedroom, two bath, duplex units. The top floor is a 24 foot ceiling, so those will all be duplex units. There will be 20 duplex units with fabulous views and all that inside. Oh no, we can't, but the windows will look exactly the same. There's about 23 different, uh, 23 different styles of windows. Some are within inches and some are within feet. But those larger windows are 15 feet high by 10 feet across. So, I mean, there are 150 feet each window, almost like a curtain.